Moving along right now, and uh, would you please welcome Kitty Flanagan? <laughs> Kitty! Yeah! You, uh, I have to say, you're looking, you're looking rather sporty. Yeah, looking rather sporty and looking rather Vetus Geralitis, circa 84. <laughs> 40, 15. Yeah, point is, check it out. I'm wearing all the gear. I'm not even exercising. Yeah, turns out the exercise in exercise gear is totally optional. See, <laughs> it's all about putting it on and just wearing it all day. You can go to the gym, you can not go to the gym. I mean, I did go to the gym at 10am last Friday. <laughs> what it's about is I keep this on all day and that prevents lactic acid buildup. See, and I've lost count of the times I've come home from doing the weekly shop and, whoo, just started to cramp up. So, yeah, yeah. I would ask you to come with me now, Chuck, and see if you'd like to ride this bandwagon full of people dressed like tits. <laughs> Kitty Flanagan, bandwagon rider. Exercise gear. These are compression pants. You can see they're clearly marked with white crisscrossy bits which says you take your exercise seriously. So how do they work? Well, according to a study done by the kinesiology department at Indiana University, they don't. <laughs> so they do nothing. Well, that's not entirely true. They have excellent wicking properties. Wicking, the process of drawing sweaty excess moisture away from the body. Exercise gear is expensive and maybe that's why the ladies are wearing it all day to get their money's worth. But the problem is it's against the law. Sure, it's one of the lesser known laws of physics, Flanagan's law of relative decency. <laughs> to calculate time allowed in gym gear outside of the gym, you start by taking the time of your gym class, let's say 0900 hours, subtract the time it takes to travel to the gym, multiply that by time spent working out, divide it by the volume in litres of moisture wicked into your pants, add the number of naked women parading around in the change rooms just loving their own nudeness, then divide it by the number of stupid things you use during your workout. Subtract your age and the answer is one hour. That's what you get. An hour before the workout, an hour after the workout, then the lycra comes off. It comes right off. Because ladies, when you're swan around all day in your tights, all I can see is your tuppence. Oh, it's defined by that form-fitting fabric. It's saying, look at me, everybody! I'm wicking! And you know what? Like, I can't see your tuppence. Then all I can think is, why can't I see a tuppence? Has she got some sort of cricketer's box down there? What's going on? Anyway, see the problem? I'm spending way too much time thinking about your tuppence. <laughs> time to get some perspective. Just as gym gear is for the gymnasium, swim gear is for the swimnasium. When I go for a swim in the morning, I don't then head straight to the office thinking, well, this is a problem for the work environment. On Thursdays, when I do a 10am boxer size class, I don't then spend the rest of the day swanning around saying, look at me, everyone, I just boxed. Time to recaffeinate. And how would the parishioners like it if I decided to go to Mass straight after I finished my Sunday morning women's sumo class? Because that nappy has no wicking properties, I can tell you. All right, obviously, I made that last one up. There's no such thing as Sunday morning Mass. <laughs> the point is, we need to change. Literally, people, after your workout, you need to change. This is Bandwagon Rider. Signing off back to you, Chuck.